Hi folks, welcome to part two of our fixturing recap series, Soft Jaws. We're gonna go through nine different videos and projects that we've shown that cover the use of Soft Jaws. Starting off with a Fusion F. Here we have a relatively simple part. It's a keychain in the Autodesk Fusion 360 letter F. And in this video, we walk through the CAD side of designing the Soft Jaws, moving into the CAM workspace to machine the Soft Jaws, including relief so that we don't over constrain nor do we make it too difficult to machine the soft jaws and then finally we show the actual machining of both the op one and the op two to get these done in one operation next up machining soft jaws to hold a piece of round material a couple interesting takeaways in this video we're actually reusing existing soft jaws it's a great way to spread the cost across jaws Many of the ones that we buy from Monster Jaws can be flipped. And in this case, we didn't need to worry even about flipping it because of the nature of the profile along the side of the part. Not only did the soft jaw hold the round bar, but we machined a pocket to hold a dowel pin that located the end of our part. Great note though to remember, when you do any sort of soft jaw work, you do have to accommodate for the two screws that hold the soft jaws into your vise body. In this case, you can see it's almost interfering. It is worth noting, McMaster Car and others sell low profile screws that can really help if you're trying to work with some close tolerances or clearances. The next three examples all relate to soft jaws to hold multiple round parts. Now, these workflows can work really well, but there's a major caveat, which is that any variation in the diameter or tolerance or size of the material that you're holding or any wear or inaccuracies in the soft jaw itself can lead to some catastrophic failures. Best case, a part just sort of rotates or spins. Worst case, you break the tool, you break the part, you damage the whole fixture. So use these with caution. Nevertheless, really useful idea for holding multiple parts. And it's also a great time to mention that if and when possible, only use soft jaws on one side of your part. In this case, we did effectively identical soft jaws on each side, but you may be able to machine soft jaws with all the complicated locating geometry on one side and then the other side can remain a hard jaw. Widget 78, we needed to cross drill in relatively high volume a number of these turned pins. And the goal had been to machine a soft jaw like this that would allow us to locate 10 of them so that we could both drill and tap them all in the same time. And while it worked initially, over time we ran into problems because as I just mentioned, any amount of unequal clamping pressure means that this part will at best case rotate or pivot, worst case start breaking tools or ruining the fixture. So how can we make up for that? You can make up for that. And we've seen it done in a couple of different ways, but the best way is some material that has a balance of flex and rigidity to help soak up any inaccuracies in that part length. We did it here in widget 79 using a, an adhesive backed rubber from McMaster Carr, which acted as a way to soak up what may have only been a few thousandths of an inch difference. Now there are some caveats here. One is that this is a wear item. It will have to be replaced every so often. The second is it's not necessarily perfect. So it worked fine for us for some period of time. It's not one of those fail safes that's going to work for every operator in every condition. It depends on how much stress or load you're putting on the cutting operation and how much inaccuracy you're trying to accommodate for. We've also seen similar things done with as simple as double-sided tape to as complicated as closed hydraulic systems, which have a series of pins that balance out the load. But really cool, but getting a bit more expensive and involved there. Next up is a part we saw on our original Area 419 shop tour. And the key takeaway here is what we had just mentioned, only putting soft jaw geometry in one jaw, and generally you want that to be the fixed jaw. So. You can see that here, the back jaw of the left vise has the geometry to locate this part. The front jaw is a simple shelf, effectively a built-in parallel. When you do this, if you're putting your datum, like a work coordinate system, pocket or boss that you are going to use a probe to locate off of, you also want that on the soft jaw that has the locating geometry and is also, again, usually the fixed jaw crazy soft jaws. So in this Wednesday widget, we were recreating a antique window latch. Really no good way for that op to work holding except for soft jaws. In this video, we walk through how we designed them, how and where we added reliefs so that they weren't over constrained. Also keeping in mind that the jaws have to open and close. And finally, showing how you can use soft jaws in the mod vise. This video walks through how you can take a traditional Noga holder and add the bottom adjust that we're huge fans of. It's just much easier to do fine adjustment of 
the dial indicator without the pressure of your hand bumping or moving that needle all over the place. So as we were making the parts, we needed a set of soft jaws. So as part of this video, we set up the Saunders Machine Works soft jaws on top of the mod vise, machined out the triangular pocket to hold that base for the op tube. As usual folks, hope you folks learned something. Hope you enjoyed. Card here to the NYC page where we'll have all these videos listed out. Otherwise, take care. See you soon.